Now, in value of business, it's always bear that in mind that we've got a formula uh, for the dividend growth model here, because that's what I mean by price. So each and every time, please copy that formula and insert the variables in. So for example, <coughs> here, is to calculate share price using a dividend growth model. So now let's see the step one. Is so that we copy that in. So PO equals to DPS or dividend per share and times by one plus the dividend growth rate divided into the cost of equity minus the growth rate. <coughs> okay, now cost of equity, KE being 12% there and the dividend payout of 45% there. Okay, so uh, <coughs> what do I mean by dividend payout? Meaning that we've got the dividend per share and divide this into the earnings per share and that becomes 0 0.45. Now, we are told the EPS is 0 0.8, so which means 0 0.8 here. So in other words, we can work out the dividend per share okay, in the numerator. <coughs> so we simply take 0 0.8 times by 45%. Now, the growth rate being 4.5% there, so 4.5% there. So you can work this out, so the share price being 5.02. So if we are given the number of shares being 10 million, so we simply times them all together, being 50.2 million. That will be the total market value. So share price will be 5.02. Okay, so we need to choose that correctly. And if that relates to the total value of equity being 50.2 million. Now, next one. <clears throat> so uh, discuss the uh, limitations of the uh, dividend growth model. Now, the ways that we discuss about the dividend growth model would be this, the first way, the, the first thing that we're going to be doing, again, copy that <coughs> mnemonic, oh, sorry, not mnemonic formula, dividend per share now, times by one plus the growth rate, and divide this into the cost of equity minus the growth rate. I would say that it's based on dividend, so what if there's no dividend at all? So some businesses, it's not going to pay dividend. Now, growth rate, you assume that there might be growth rate calculated either from the past, but if there's no dividend at all in the past, and a Gordon's growth. Because the Gordon's growth rate, we simply take the, the monies that we retained in the business which means one minus the dividend payout and times by the uh, return on equity. Now, in other words, when we're determining that return or RE here, it's quite subjective. Yes, sometimes you can use the return on equity, which means the money you retain and to uh, invest in the business in the future. To so search next time, particularly objective because you can use ROE alternatively it's the margin to determine that RE at the same time to calculate that cost of equity you use CAPM because it assumes the market is perfect now how many points that you can write there one two three Four? Okay, so this is how we gain four marks. Now, uh, the answer I'll show you here, for example, this assumes that the dividend growth at the constant rate, which means talking about G, and the cost of equity calculation, yes, using CAPM, we're talking about the KE, <clears throat> assumes that we've got the dividend payment, which means we've got the DPS, dividend per share, and it's more suitable with stable dividend payments companies usually for bank using dividend valuation model would be good however for high tech companies they might not be paying dividend at all so for example one of the famous examples would be tesla okay now no dividend at all so uh, no point in using that formally <clears throat> moving on the next one uh it's the mfz company so calculates the total equity value 
which means total, we take the share price and to multiply by the number of shares. We are told the number of shares being 12 million. So we work out the share price, that would be good there. Now, using dividend growth model, so can you remember the first step? The first step is always, we don't change. So we copy that in, <clears throat> so PO equals to dividend per share now, and times by one plus the growth rate of the dividend, divide this into a cost of equity minus dividend. That's oh, like my minus dividend growth rate. Okay then. Now, um, it's all a whole host of information there. So, but uh, we are focusing on the 2014. Now, we are given the uh, profit before interest and tax, so PBIT, PAT, profit after tax and dividend. Oh, equity market value, right, okay. So, we are given total dividend. We are given the number of shares there. So, you can work this out, the dividend per share being the total dividend. And to divide this into the number of shares. So uh, we take $5.1 million okay, in the numerator and the denominator being 12 million. So if that's the case then, uh, that becomes, <clears throat> just to calculate that for you, 5.1 divided into 12, 0 0.425. That's the dividend per share. Now how about the growth rate? Now we're told that the growth rate, we can use the historical growth model, yes. Because growing from 4.8 to 5.1. So the growth rate being, we take 5.1, divide this into 4.8 for power of 2. Because there, there'll be two, yes, intervals here. Because from 2012 to 2013 to 2014, minus 1. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, if that's the case, then, yes, we can work this out being 3.1% now. Alternatively, you can calculate the, uh, <coughs> the, the growth rate uh, using, I mean, 5.1 divided this into 5.1 for power of 1 minus 1, that would be uh, 1, okay, that would be nothing, in other words, which means zero dividend growth. But you don't really have to do it, but you, what you can do is that from the very past up to now, so growth rate being 3.1% now. Okay, um, now what comes next? We are told about the required return from shareholders being 12%, which means the KE. Okay, we can work this out as the share price being 4.92 times by a number of shares of 12 million being 59.04 million. Now, why is it different from the current market value? Okay. Now, the current market value being 56.4. Okay, now, why this would be a case that I would say that you can copy the answer from the previous question because we're told that we can comment on these four disadvantages of a dividend growth model, okay? So we are simply, yes, you can use different answers if you want. So we are talking about the disadvantage of this model. <clears throat> now, um, moving on then. Uh, now, calculate the uh, company's value using the dividend valuation model, okay? But firstly, it's an estimate to see current cost of equity. Now, uh, quite a huge question, I would say, that uh, that we've done this before, yeah? So let's see how it worked this out. Now, uh, the current cost of equity, we are told about the risk-free rate and so on, the risk premium. So we can use CAPM formally, which means cost of equity equals the risk-free rate plus beta times by return from a market minus risk-free rate. If you can't remember this, yes, you can always see the capital asset pricing model in the formula in this one. The risk free rate being 4% there. And premium, premium means this minus start being 5%. So, uh, 
will be a beta factor. Let's find this uh, the company equity beta being 1.6. So 1.6 there. So you can work this out being 12%. Okay, now what will be the next one? Of course, things do not change at all. Okay, I don't like things to change. Now, so <clears throat> this means that I can copy the formula in the growth model price equals to the dividend per share and times by one plus the dividend growth rate divide this into cost of equity minus the dividend growth rate now cost of equity it holds about 12 percent we just calculated before now let's read the question the company is listed struggle with profitability and there are now clear signs of economic recovery and we are optimistic that payments can be assumed. So this means that we can calculate the dividend per share. So we are told about the forecast information and we've got the year one to three into the future. Okay, regarding the dividend. So all in thousand. So this means that we're told about the total dividend. The company is okay with the earnings and dividend will increase after year three at the constant annual rate. So this means that after year three, which will be perpetuity, and this means that after year three, we can apply the dividend growth model, or the formula will apply after year three, okay? Now, we are told about the company uh, gearing and, uh, and, and, and so on, and, and, and the additional debts and so on, okay? So uh, we're not particularly interested about those but um, <clears throat> what we can say is that because we will get the dividend in year one zero we will get a dividend of 500 we will get the dividend of a thousand so all we can do is that uh, after the third year okay which means uh, from the uh, I mean after the at the end of the uh, sorry at the start of the year four, yes, we'll get the dividend also, okay, in, into the future. Now, what we can do is this. Now, we've got the years, uh, one, two, three, and four, two, forever. The dividends that we can get being zero, five hundred, a thousand, and the dividend growth models that we need to apply. Now, uh, the discount rate, as I said before, yes, we worked this out, so we discount it at twelve percent. Now, at the end of year one, for path one, two, three. Okay. Now, at the same time, my tip when we are applying the dividend growth model will be to use the discount factor, okay, previously. Okay, because that will be at the start of year four, which means at the end of year three, so we are counting for three years return already. So when we discount the uh, delayed perpetuity, we use the discount factor from a previous year. Okay, so that's the logic. So you can work out the present value for that which means the dividend times by discount factor, zero minus this, uh, sorry, zero times by this, zero, 500 times by this, uh, so that give me 398, 597. A thousand times by this, 711, 780. Okay, so how about the final one? Of course, we need to slot the information in firstly, because, yes, uh, what we need to do is to calculate that value and times by 1 over 1.12 for power of 3. Now, to work this out, again, the dividend times by 1 plus growth rate, because we are talking about the total value. Now, we are not required to work out the individual share price. The dividend uh, would be growing at the growth rate of 3% there 
and that would be 12% of your cost of equity. The latest dividend would be a thousand there. Okay, so just plot that into your calculator, that giving you 11444444. Now, what you can do is the final one is 11444444 times by 1 over 1.12 for a power of 3. Okay. Uh, that being the case, about 81459929. Okay. So you simply plot them all together and that becomes the total value of equity. So uh, in our answer, please change that figure, okay? So the total value of equity equals to approximately $9.3 million. Hope this helps.